Welcome to our Wednesday evening virtual service. I'm so glad you've been able to join us, either via Facebook Live or Zoom. And we begin our service, actually it's pre-service, with a 10-minute meditation. So I invite you to just get still, wherever you are. Close your eyes. And just notice if you're seated in a comfortable position, try to position yourself such that your spine remains erect. Maybe lean forward just a little bit. That takes some pressure off of the bottom of your spine. So you can just sit comfortably and not be distracted by bodily sensations. And we allow ourselves to just bring our awareness into the present moment using the breath as a tool to focus on. So with each in-breath and with each exhalation, you might want to say silently to yourself, breathing in, breathing out. You might want to bring your awareness to the sensation of the chest expanding as you inhale and deflating as you exhale. Or noticing the sensation in the nostrils with the in-breath and the out-breath. Whatever you choose, just put your attention right there. And then as the mind wanders, which it has a tendency to do, when you notice that it's wandered off the breath, just cultivate that sense of that compassionate, non-judgmental observer that just notices. Notice where your mind went. Did it get distracted by a thought? feeling? Did it get caught up in thoughts about the past or the future? Just observe for a moment. Observe if the thoughts brought up any kind of emotional feelings, anything going on that way. Just watch for a moment. And then with great compassion, Bring your awareness back to the breath. Breathing in, breathing out.
So gently bring your awareness back into your body, noticing your surroundings. You just shrug your shoulders, wiggle your fingers and toes, take a nice deep breath, and bring your awareness back into the room. So once again, welcome to our Wednesday evening virtual service and a special welcome to any of you who joined us during the meditation. Let's begin our service with our opening chant led by the wonderful Tina Meeks. Tina. Mm. Let's come together in prayer. Just remembering those words, God is in this place. Because God is in every place. That truly, as much as we may have a sense of you, me, him, her, this and that, here and there, it's all the one life, the one love, the one infinite intelligence and creativity of God that impels itself into creation and that lives through, around, and as all the forms in the universe. And so I know that each and every one of us gathered for this virtual service this evening is an expression of this life of God we forever feel the impulse of God to feel good, for its goodness to be known and felt and realized through us. And I know that as we come together this evening, that that presence of God's love that flows through each and every person that is joining for the service, that is of service during this time together, that that love lifts us and it opens us up to the truth of that divine nature that is the truth of who we truly are, each and every one of us. And so I know that God is unfolding and flowing through our beloved soloist Tina this evening that we are uplifted by her music and I open myself up right now to being that channel through which the word that needs to be spoken is spoken. I know that this is what all of us have come to hear and share. And so knowing it's all God operating through every part of this time together, I give thanks for all the blessings we receive. And in gratitude, I release this word knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. Together we say, Amen. 
And so please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. I'm powered as I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up. faith on heaven's stable land, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. My heart has no desire to stay where doubts arise and dismay though some may dwell where those abound my goal my aim is higher ground lord lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven stable on higher on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's stable land, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher my heart has no desire to stay where doubts arise and, and fears dismay but though some may dwell where those abound Lord I just want to have my feet on higher ground Lord lift me up Me stand by 
by faith on heaven's stable land higher land than I have ever found Lord plant my feet on higher Thank you, Tina, for taking us to higher ground. <laughs> Actually, if I could borrow those shoes, I'd really be on higher ground. <laughs> okay. <laughs> for those of you who can't see, they're pretty high. <laughs> so, my topic tonight is spiritual reprogramming. And in case you haven't guessed, uh, it's inspired by my experiences in corporate America prior to stepping into full-time ministry. And although the bulk of my experiences in the corporate world was running customer service and order fulfillment organizations, um, you know, that it was really more about interacting with people and dealing with their problems and getting their problems resolved, I did interact a lot with software developers, uh, with programmers. And in my last eight years in the corporate, uh, this corporate position, I, even though I had zero programming experience and to this day could not write a line of code, if you put a gun to my head, please don't, test me on that, but seriously, I, mean, I, I would not be able to uh, write any kind of program. Uh, the relationship actually worked really well because I was the person that could envision what a program should do that would make the work for my staff and other uh, departments in the company that we were supporting more efficient, that it would make it uh, work a lot better. Uh, help identify issues that we could resolve and save a lot of money. And then I could communicate those ideas to these programmers, and I would just sit there in awe sometimes of watching them just sitting there typing away, and all of a sudden, shazam, there was this program that did exactly what I wanted it to do. Well. I would say eventually it would do exactly what I wanted it to do because generally speaking, no matter how talented or efficient the programmers were, and I think this is absolutely normal in the software development world, is there would be little glitches in the program that you wouldn't recognize or catch until you actually started working with it. So the process was that you know the developers would bring something to me and my staff, and we would start working with it. And then when something didn't work right, we would just go back to the programmer that had worked on that particular application and let them know what's going on. And they would then go dig into the code to find and fix the error that was causing the problem. The bottom line, 
is that when something wasn't working the way we expected it to, we all knew it was due to some little error in the program. And I'm bringing that up because I see many parallels to science of mind. You know, in our philosophy, we teach that there is a direct correlation between our thought patterns, what we believe about ourselves, about life, about others, that inner programming, we could call it. There's a direct correlation between that and how we experience life. We teach that God's nature is everywhere present, fully and equally. There's no more God over here or in that person or over there than anywhere else. But we're created with the free will to discover that nature within ourselves, for ourselves. We have the capacity to either sense, perceive that innate goodness within ourselves, within others, within situations, no matter how they may be appearing, we have the capacity to sense, even if something isn't looking right, that there's a greater good inside us and others, and there's a greater good to be revealed in difficult situations, or to think contrarily. We could think in terms of feeling separate from God, not sensing that presence of God either within ourselves or others, not sensing that underlying of potential of God to be revealed in different situations. The more we feel our oneness, this is the key of our philosophy, the more we know that we are one of and one with God, all of us, the more we experience God's nature in our lives, the more we call it forth into expression, the more we feel separate from God, from good, from each other, the more we experience a lot of negativity in our life. All too often, I would say, when we encounter life challenges, challenges with our health, with relationships, with our careers, finances, whatever, our focus tends to be on changing things outwardly, whatever it is that we're not liking in the moment, to try and fix it on this outer plane, to fix the worldly condition without necessarily looking within ourselves to see what programming, what belief pattern in ourselves we might want to change. And granted, you know, we can very often manipulate things in the world to make things feel better for a while. But have you noticed that when you just keep trying to change things out here without looking within and experiencing some kind of inner change, that those changes that make, make us feel better for a while don't really hold up long term? You know, in, in the world of software programming, when there's a bug in the program, usually we find ways to work around it temporarily till it gets fixed. But eventually, we need that bug to be fixed for things to operate at peak efficiency. Well, you know, we can find ways to make things feel better temporarily when we're dealing with an issue like maybe an underlying health issue you know, make use of medications, therapies, tools that make it bearable, but not necessarily help to heal the condition. We can find ways to, oh, I'm sure we're all very good at the, about this, um, you know, keeping things smooth and pleasant in a relationship outwardly, not dealing with the inner resentments, the unwillingness to forgive. For a while, we can do that, but does that really, really lead to a healthy relationship? You know, we can shuffle those bills around to our hearts, go, oh, you know what, if I pay this one off or maybe shift this over to a new credit card or do this or do that, there are all kinds of ways that we can temporarily alleviate that problem or even, you know, we can 
go to the idea of, well, I'll make some more money or I'll spend less. But if there's an underlying feeling of it's never enough, we're not really healing the driver of what is causing those financial challenges. So at some point, we need to get to the core. We need to see where we're denying God's presence in ourselves, in others, or in situations at hand. And so one thing I noticed and I really admired in many of the programmers, the really you know, good ones that I worked with, is that you know, they, they definitely felt a connection with the programs they were working on. You know, it was like their little baby. But when something wasn't working right, they had a very optimistic outlook in terms of, OK, it's just a matter of finding. There's something in here that needs to be changed. They didn't suddenly despair that the whole program was you know, worthless or that they were worthless. It was just an idea of, OK, there's a, a little problem. I, I just need to identify it, and it'll get fixed. They demonstrated that idea that we promote, if any of you have uh, studied Don Miguel Ruiz's book, The Four Agreements, what's one of the agreements? Not to take things personally. They really demonstrated it to me in that when I would be watching, it's like, okay, they just, they know there's, there's something here that needs to be fixed, but it's fixable. It can be changed. When life challenges present themselves, we definitely have a tendency to take them personally, to somehow think it's a reflection on me, I'm not enough, or that's just not fair, life isn't fair, woe is me. Or in science of mind, in teachings like New Thought, where we know that our thinking is creative, we can use this teaching in a negative way by feeling like, well, I shouldn't be having a negative experience. I'm obviously not using this teaching correctly. We need, we need to put those kinds of patterns and behaviors aside. And when we see a challenge coming up in our lives, when we're doing our spiritual work to expand our consciousness and negative feelings and emotions come up, it's helpful to be able to just get centered and know that there's just something here for me to perceive differently. You know, we don't want to identify with the flaw in the thinking or give power to the situation. You know, just as a programmer would know what the program is supposed to do, what it's not doing correctly, and then go to the core to say what needs to be corrected, our process can be about look, looking at what's occurring, what's occurring out there that's causing us any form of distress. OK, so what's happening? And then ask ourselves, well, what quality of God am I seeking to experience more fully here? What quality of God am I wanting to see more fully revealed? So we start there. So maybe it's greater love, greater joy, greater abundance, greater health, whatever it is. We then can ask ourselves, well, what error belief do I need to release? And what truth do I need to accept? So then I can reprogram my thinking. That's how we go about identifying what changes, what corrections. We ask, what quality of God are we wanting to see more fully experienced or expressed? What's going on? What error belief do I need to release? What thing am I telling myself about I can't, it's not possible, it has to be this way? And what truth, truth being with a capital T, about that God is right there? It, truth is always about us somehow seeing God, perceiving God in the situation. Ernest Holmes, our founder, talked about us having a mental equivalent of the experience our souls are seeking 
but that we're not currently experiencing. That, so we have to have a mental idea of what is this greater good. And when we have that mental equivalent in mind, and we keep doing our work in consciousness to accept its possibility, our inner programming changes. When we keep holding that greater good, and we feel it, we envision it, we feel it, we feel that vibration of God there, and we absolutely begin to accept it, and we let go of those ideas of it's not possible, or it can't be, or whatever we've been telling ourselves. We are reprogramming our minds to create that matching outer experience. So since I was inspired by my uh, corporate experience, I thought I'd share that, you know, when I was first called into management positions in the company, when um, I would be offered or people would start talking about, you know, you should really consider moving into this position. Part of me would think, well, that could be exciting, but there was this knee-jerk fear, particularly with one advancement that I was facing, a knee-jerk fear that came up for me. And in working with a practitioner, I realized that my fear was that I was already so busy in my work. I was really, really busy. And if I moved into a higher level position, which involved more money, I would be so busy and stressed, I would just be absolutely miserable. So part of me felt called to go into it because I could see that when I would sit in management meetings and offer ideas that they were really appreciated and that when people followed up, that you know, there, there was a way for me to make a positive impact that way. I could see ways that I worked uh, effectively with groups of people. But I had a false belief that if I was going to advance and get paid more, that was a big part of it too, it meant work would be harder to the point of being unbearable. And so a practitioner and I worked on me developing a mental equivalent. So I had to imagine being in a management role, contributing, feeling like you know, what I was doing was making a positive impact, and having time and space as needed to function effectively and also have balance in my life. That initially sounded like a triple oxymoron. I mean, if there is such a thing, it just felt like that I could talk about having this position and having these other things. You, you couldn't have them all at once, was the mentality. That was the error belief that needed to be reprogrammed. And so I remember working with an, an affirmation along the lines of, I'm in a management position in which I'm inspired, I'm making positive contributions, and I'm feeling balanced and fulfilled. And just imagining that feeling, seeing that, just even if it seemed like a wild dream, just always bringing that up in my mind and going over that affirmation. And I'm so grateful I worked with that practitioner for that because as I look back on it, if I hadn't, if I'd given into the fear, the richness of experiences, including those that contributed to my, some of the skills I would need to step into a life in full-time ministry later on, I would have missed out on that. You know, so I invite us this evening to look at this idea of where are we feeling called to experience some greater good, but somehow telling ourselves that we can't have it, that it can't be. And then without disparaging ourselves, okay? So it's not about, this isn't you know, your idea, it's just a, it's an idea that made its way into your consciousness that you are going to correct. So without being hard on ourselves, we just go to the question, well, what quality of God is my soul seeking to experience more fully here? What idea am I buying into that's holding me back that I can release? And then 
What truth? And remember, when I'm talking about truth, it's about something that reflects that awareness of God, God's nature being there and being bigger than whatever challenge we're having. You know, what truth am I ready to embody? You know, as we keep affirming and envisioning, feeling ourselves in that experience, we reprogram our minds to open to that greater good that God seeks to experience and express through each of us. That's how we move to higher ground. So let's take this moment to turn inward. And I invite you to call to mind some greater good that you would like to be experiencing, but that just seems out of reach right now. And as you imagine that greater good for yourself, just notice what knee-jerk kind of thoughts and feelings come up regarding why this can't be or why it would just be so impossible. And try to look from the perspective that these, these aren't your beliefs, they're just beliefs that at some point your consciousness took on. But they can be released and changed at any time. So having a sense of some of these limiting beliefs Go back to imagining yourself experiencing your greater good completely free of those beliefs. Just free of the, I can't, it's too hard, that would never work. It can't be without some other problem coming up. And just ask, what truth are you being called to embody more fully right now? Might be the truth of your capacity to love and trust more openly, the truth of your health and wholeness, the truth of being abundantly sourced and supplied, the truth of your inner wholeness never being impacted by outer conditions. What is that truth? of God's nature in you that you are ready to embody now. And so set your intention, just set the intention right now to release those old limiting beliefs and embrace this new life-affirming one. It all starts with an intention, so start there and know that you've started your process of reprogramming your mind to accept more of God's goodness in your life. And so from this place, let us join in knowing the truth of God's presence, being the absolute one and only presence in the universe, that truly God is fully and equally present throughout creation, and that that presence lies in each and every one of us, every being, everywhere. And as God is in all places, all things, all beings, let us know the truth for anyone that is experiencing any Difficulty with change that God, the nature of God in all of us is changeless, birthless, deathless, and that whatever change is happening humanly is just an opportunity for God's nature to be known and experienced and expressed in some new way. For those who may be experiencing challenges with health, let us remember the truth of God's perfect wholeness, that vitality, that well-being, that is the core nature of each and every one of us. And as we open to that truth, the pathways for healing, the pathways into 
well-being are absolutely revealed, where there is any sense of not being fulfilled, let us know that each and every being is created out of God, is created out of that desire of God to give of itself unto itself uniquely through each being. Everyone has their perfect place. And as we open to this truth, those who are feeling like they aren't in the right place, they aren't of value, find their perfect right place to give and to be valued and appreciated. For those who are experiencing any sense of lack or limitation, let us know the truth of God's infinite abundance, that infinite giver, receiver that lives in all of us. And that, that opens through that knowingness, it opens the channels for that divine inflow to be provided for and to be able to generously give to life. And let us finally remember the absolute truth of God's core nature being one of love, love being an impulse toward good for all. And so as we open to that vibration of love, there's a greater capacity to give, to receive that love, to feel the love of self, of the divine, just delighting in being itself as each of us. And knowing that that nature of love is for greater good, let us honor it by setting our own individual intentions for greater good in silence. And so whatever that greater good may be, be it greater good for ourselves, for loved ones, for situations in the world, let us just absolutely know that God is right there at the center of every one of these situations. And as we know this, good is revealed. And together we declare, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And so we bless our church, we bless all churches, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God, and to the full and overflowing heart, just with such gratitude that I release this word, knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. And together we say, Amen. I'm only here for God No more struggle and no more strife With my faith I see the light I am free in the spirit Yes, I'm only here for God I release and I let go I let the spirit run my life And my heart is open wide Yes, I'm only here for God. No more struggle and no more strife. With my faith, I see the light. I am free in the spirit. Yes, I'm only here for God. Yes, I'm only here for God. Yes, I'm Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Tina. So this is the time in our service for our affirmative giving. And so just a quick reminder of ways you can give while we're doing this virtually. Um, you can call after the service if you'd like, and we'll be here for about 15 minutes after service. So you can make a donation over the phone with a credit or debit card. That's 818-762-7566. Uh, you can give uh, online. You'll probably see a link, nhcrs.org forward slash give, and that takes you to our donation page where you can do a one-time or a recurring uh, donation. And you can text the word give to area code 818-457-3419. 
as always, we just, we don't stop being grateful for all the ways that you continue to support this community. So thank you. And just feeling that energy of giving, let us hold our hands to our hearts as we say together, from the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you. Blessed always, blessed always for the arms of God surround us. Let our joy be so triumphant that we rest in So, as we wind our service down and uh, bring things to a close, I want to start off just by saying thank you to everyone who's of service this evening. Uh, let me start tonight uh, with those who are in this sanctuary, because they have been working hard in the background, folks, let me tell you. <laughs> There's been a lot of running around going on here, and going like, what's happening? <laughs> Thank you, Adam, for uh, being, making sure we're seen and heard, to Doreen and Mark and Brenda. What I just know, it was all just fine. <laughs> Thank you for all the love you put into it. And to our absolutely wonderful, wonderful Tina, as always, yes, yes. <laughs> and to out there in virtual land, thank you to practitioner Liz Racy, who is holding vigil for us this evening. Thank you to Lynn Romanowski, Alma Alvarez, and Mark. Well, are you doing, uh, you're doing Zoom too, Mark? Oh boy, you are one busy person today. <laughs> okay, and uh, to, on Facebook Live to Melissa Allen. So once again, thank you to all of you. Uh, so let's see, what do I want to let you know here before we wrap it up? Um, Tina's music is available on iTunes if you want to get more of that inspiration. She's got a lot of it out there. Uh, a quick reminder again about donations. You can make them over the phone calling into the church office after service on our website at nhcrs.org forward slash give and by texting the word give to 818-457-3419. Uh, as always, after any of our services, prayer with a practitioner is available on Zoom. So if you'd like a practitioner to pray with you, uh, just make sure you're on Zoom. If you're on Facebook Live, go to our website and get the Zoom link, and we can put you in a one-on-one -on -one breakout room uh, for prayer. You can email your prayer requests to prayer at nhcrs.org or call into the church and option four allows you to leave a voicemail with your prayer request. And we check those every evening and send those requests out to our practitioners. 
Also, if you just want to be uplifted in prayer in the middle of the week, you just need to hear some words of truth, you can call in the church office, and option three is dial a prayer, where you'll hear a pre-recorded message and uh, a reading and a prayer that uh, our practitioners do that. So uh, let's see. Next Wednesday evening, same time, same place on Facebook Live and Zoom. Hopefully both cameras operating smoothly. <laughs> My topic will be pedestals be gone. Well, we don't have any up here tonight, so it's good. Um, <laughs> living a Course on, in Miracles via Zoom. Uh, this group is facilitated by our wonderful practitioner, Jeannie Laporte, and they meet tomorrow evening uh, from 7.15 to 9.15. And all are welcome. Uh, it's not that you know, you've had to attend prior classes. You can start at any time. So uh, please feel free to join uh, Living a Course in Miracles. Our grief support group, led by uh, practitioner Cal Winnaker, who just does a wonderful job leading people through that grief process. Our, their meeting on Sunday at 1 p.m. via Zoom. Again, anyone going through any kind of a grief process is welcome. We have, as we've announced before, limited in-person attendance that we've started for our Sunday 9.45 a.m. service. If you're interested, please go to our website and sign up and, or call the church office if you have problems uh, with the internet. But um, you, know, you can sign up to attend in person. There's still room for this Sunday. And uh, our Wednesday service, for the time being, will still continue to just be offered via Facebook Live and Zoom. Zoom virtual patio before and after services, uh, 20 minutes before, and then we hang out afterwards if you want to visit with your fellow congregants. Men's group meets every Sunday from 11 to 11.30. And we continue to have our morning meditation Monday through Saturday from 8 to 8.15. So for um, in the morning, uh, so just visit our website, nhcrs.org, for more information and Zoom links. And I'm just going to put a little teaser out there. But uh, on Friday, June 18th, we're going to have a movie screening. And uh, it'll be both it live and uh, on Zoom. So. Uh, we'll tell you more about that Sunday. We'll just keep piquing your interest. <laughs> so with that, uh, let's turn our attention inward one more time. Just giving thanks once again for all the ways that that life of the divine, that love, that inspiration, that creativity, that all goodness, has revealed itself through our time together. I know that God has been unfolding through every part of this service. And I absolutely know that each of us has gained some blessings, some that we, we might not be aware of, but on some level, we have been touched, there's been healing, and we now get to carry that out into the world where it multiplies. And so I just give thanks for the blessings we've received and those that continue to unfold as we go forward. And in gratitude, I release this word knowing it is so. I let it be, and so it is. Together we say, amen. Thank you again for being with us tonight. Tina, let's close us out. Okay. <laughs> Everybody.